The Romance of the Ranchos. New Hall, 1842. First gold discovered in California. New Hall, 1876. Railroad gives Los Angeles first link with East. New Hall, 1924. Old Rancho finally passes from hands of illustrious California family. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles presents The Romance of the Ranchos, a program dramatizing the wealth of exciting and fascinating incidents that color the history of Southern California. Each week, our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, unfolds another authentic story of the days of the dawn. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles wishes to thank the many officials and teachers of the city and county schools who have expressed so much interest in this series of programs. Every precaution is taken to ensure the historical accuracy of these dramatizations. When you hear the thrilling story of your own community reenacted here, you may be sure that the historical facts given are correct, even though the adventure and romance portrayed may seem stranger and more exciting than fiction. We are fortunate indeed to live in a land with such a colorful background, and one that at the same time presents so many advantages and opportunities for present-day living. And here to tell us the story is our wandering vaquero, Frank Graham. Buenas noches, senoras y senores. Tonight, our story deals with an interesting section of the Southland adjoining San Fernando, the region of Newhall and Saugus and the upper Santa Clara Valley. Not the least interesting part of this story is the fact that only recently has part of this land passed from the Del Valle family to whom it was originally granted. This is a tale rich in the romance of the ranchos. In 1839... Don Antonio, the founder of the Del Valle family in California, received 48,611 acres from the governor and thus began the great Rancho San Francisco. But Don Antonio died in 1841, leaving his great estate to his widow and children, who later turned their interests over to the eldest son, Don Ignacio Del Valle, lieutenant of the Mexican army. It was about the year 1842 that Don Ignacio brought his bride, the beautiful Isabel Varela, to live in his new rancho home. Ignacio, it is beautiful, so beautiful. You like it, Isabel? See, how could I help it? Such a fine hacienda. Ah, see, and the corrals and vineyards. Hey, look out there, across the valley. Such fine pasture land. Why, before long, Camulos will be one of the greatest cattle ranchos in all California. Camulos? See, si, that is the name by which this part of the rancho San Francisco is known. But what does it mean? It is Indian for juniper tree or, or shelter. Shelter. See, it is our shelter, is it not, Ignacio? Oh, see, and it always will be. Oh, but wait, you have not seen it all. There is more? See, right this way, to the little room of the house. But what more could we ask than all of this? Now you shall see. There, you see? Ignacio, oh, Ignacio, it is a little chapel. See, I built it especially for you. Look, a small altar, everything. Oh, it is so beautiful. Here you may lead us all in prayer each sundown. See, in prayer the thanksgiving that such a wonderful home should be ours, for here is everything we could wish. It is indeed our shelter. Ignacio, my husband, let us kneel down and thank God for this home, our Rancho Camulos. May it be a haven for us always, and for our children, and our children's children, forever. The life of Rancho San Francisco, in the section of it called Camulos, was a pastoral idyll, serene and filled with sunshine. A first warning of the great events to come took place one day when a cattleman by the name of Francisco Lopez was riding through the canyons with a companion. 
Francisco. Perhaps they're up this canyon, huh? Bah, I am sick of looking for stray horses. Let us rest there, eh? Oh, but Francisco, they are valuable animals. We must find them. The way I feel now, I don't care if I never find them again. Uh, let them run up one canyon and down another. Let them hide behind the rocks and stand in the shade so we cannot see them. I do not care. <laughs> I am sick of being led all over these hills by a roguish pair of horses. Is this why I spent years at the School of Mines in the city of Mexico? Is this why I spent weeks and months of study? To be playing Niñera to a herd of four-footed vagabonds? Oh, and a fine nursemaid you are, too. <laughs> Niñera to a bunch of horses. <laughs> that is really... Uh, oh, oh. <laughs> Here I stop. I am hot and I am sticky and I am tired. Those decrepit antecedents of Rosinante may kick up their heels all they like. I'm going to turn mine up in the shade of that tree. Oh, I need a rest. <laughs> Very well, mi amigo. We shall take siesta in the shade, but only for a while. Soon we must be on our way after the fort. Put it the Diablo. Gee, huh? but right now I want to just lie here. Let the horses graze in command. At last, I may rest my creaking joints. Ah. Wow! <laughs> <laughs> You had better pick your spot more carefully, mi amigo. <laughs> the carte sleep does not make the best of resting places. <laughs> Try the wild onion patch over there and be much softer, I assure you. <laughs> I did not have to go to university to learn that. <laughs> uh, why am I plagued with such a loco? <laughs> mm, wild onions, eh? Now that reminds me I must bring home some greens for Maria. But tonight we are to share a meal with guests. Oh, well, I may as well get them now. Let me your hunting knife, one. <laughs> See, but do not dull it. Be sure you use it on the onions, not on any cactus. Ah, be quiet, or I shall use it on you, you loco. Yeah, I hope these are not as tough in the eating as in the cutting. Dig them out by the roots. I did not have to go to university to learn about that but either. But <laughs> before I lose my temper, I know how to dig wild onions. I need any other advice. Oh! Ah, there it is. And a huge one it is, too. Look at it, a meal in itself. <laughs> See, if you care for such a meal. <laughs> As for me, give me a great, big, tasty one. Look at this. Clinging to the roots. A sparkling pebble. See, si, so it is. How it shines in the sun. Oh, it would make a pretty trinket for my little Juanita. She likes shiny pebbles. I shall take it home to Wait. her. I... You shall not take this one home to Juanita. Do you realize what this is, Juan? This is not a pebble. It is gold. A nugget of gold. Go... What are you talking about, Francisco? Gold? Why, there is no gold around you here. You can tell me about horses. You can tell me about digging wild onions. But you can't tell me anything about gold. For that, I studied in the university. This is gold. I know it. You, you are sure? See, si. Juan, take the knife. Dig more plants. Look for more of these little pebbles. Perhaps, perhaps we have found a placer. A placer of gold. <laughs> And Francisco Lopez had found a placer of gold. More than six years before Marshall's discovery at Sutter's Creek electrified the world and changed the whole course of California's destiny, the yellow metal was found on Rancho San Francisco. Prospectors from Los Angeles flocked to the canyons of the Santa Clara. But the small quantity of water hindered any large-scale operations, and it remained for Northern California to become the mecca of the gold-hungry crowds. Life on Rancho San Francisco was largely untouched by the turn of affairs, but once again, its pastoral solitude was broken by an incident which formed a part of great events to come. It was one day in March of 1850 that Don Inacio was startled with the news. Don Inacio, Don Inacio, come quick! See, si, see, si, Juan, what is it? Don Inacio, in the pasture down by the arroyo, the dead have risen from the grave. What? Si. Juan, what are you talking about? I saw it with my own eyes. Men and women come back from the dead, their cheeks hollow, their eyes sunk. Like walking skeletons. Juan, what is this? The dead have arisen to murder us as they are killing our cattle right now. What? Killing our cattle? See, see, and eating the meat raw. Hmm. Then they are not ghosts, but people. And they cannot do that? It is against the law. Law? What do the dead care for the law? Come quickly and show me. We must stop them. Oh, senor, so I would rather stay here. Come and hurry. <laughs> Juan, look. They are people. They were people. 
They are starved, exhausted. See, they are almost dead. Senores! Stand back. Stand back. I have a gun. I'll use it. But, senor, I... Don't try to stop us, mister. We need food, and we'll kill to get it. But, senor, of course. This is my rancho, my cattle. I do not intend to stop you. Only, senor, won't you? All of you come to my house and rest. Let me give you food, cooked food. Oh, oh, mister, I don't know who you are, but you look like God to me. We've been lost in the desert for weeks. How many, I, I don't know. We, well, you can see for yourself. See, but come, let us not waste time in talk. Come with me. You shall have food and water. Water? Water? Kirk. Dead air. Dead air. <sighs> Catch the boy. He's fainted. <laughs> Uh, here you are, amigos. Our fattest beef. Eggs, corn, tortillas, frijoles, anything you wish. And water. <laughs> Gallons of water. Mister, I don't know how we can ever thank you enough for this. <laughs> don't thank me, senor. I have thanks enough in seeing you eat as much as you can hold. <laughs> well, you're certainly going to see that. <laughs> I am so sorry. I should have known. You cannot eat so much after having eaten nothing for weeks. It is not good. Can't, can't you do something? I have sent for the doctor. He will be here soon. He, he'd better hurry. We'll all die a worse death than the ones we left behind on the desert. <laughs> The doctor arrived in time to save the agonized remnants of the ill-fated party, whose terrible sufferings gave Death Valley its name. But they were but one of the parties of valiant American pioneers who started one of the greatest mass movements the world has ever known, but one of the first ripples of that great wave of progress which was to transform the whole life and character of California. A few years later, as the value of most California ranchos was declining, Don Inacio found an unusual interest centered on Rancho San Francisco. Tell me, Senor Borg, why are you so interested in buying the Rancho San Francisco? Uh, well, now, Don Inacio, I haven't said that I was interested in buying. I just wanted to know how much you'd ask, yes, in case. Mm, it is the same thing, and you know it, Senor. <laughs> Don't try to, uh, how you say, fool me, Senor. You did not even blink an eye when I said $50,000. <laughs> You must want this land very badly, senor. No, no. Uh, well, that is, I might be interested in it. Yes. And why? That is what I want to know. It uh, could not have anything to do with your Philadelphia and California oil company, could it? Uh, well, now I... Uh, just uh, as I thought. You have heard the stories about oil which seeps up on my land, eh? Uh, stories, you say? Uh, you mean they're not true? Oh, see, they are true, all right. When they were first discovered, I had visions of great riches, too, but now I don't know. Well, my men have looked over this land, and I'm willing to take a chance on what they say. Now, as long as we have our cards on the table, don't you, Nacio? I may as well admit it. I'll buy your land uh, if you'll sell. <laughs> but, senor, I do not want to sell. <laughs> I have no reason to. That is why I named such a high price. Well, I'll pay your price and more if you'll sell. Senor, you mean you pay that much money? Now, look, I'll put all my cards on the table. I'm willing to pay a um, dollar and 25 cents an acre. That comes to about uh, 58000 If you take that figure, I'll buy Rancho San Francisco. Ignacio, my husband, is that you? See, little doll, how are you? Ignacio. You have sold the rancho? See, si, I have sold the San Francisco. But how did you know? A man was here. He said that we must get out of here, out of this house, off the land. What? Out of here? No, Isabel. I sold Rancho San Francisco, but not our home. Not this part we call Camulos. 
this is ours, and it shall remain ours. Oh, Ignacio, I am happy to hear you say that. I did not believe that ever you would sell our shelter, our camura. Never, little dove. And I shall go to Senor Bar right away and find out what he means by this. Isabel. Oh. oh, my husband. Come, kneel beside me here before the altar. Here is such peace and love. See, si, mi querida. You are burning a lamp? See, si, it is burning in prayer that our shelter may not be taken from us. And that is the news that I have for you. It shall not be. Camulos is ours and always shall be. A mistake was made. I had to buy back this land, but it is finished now. And no one can take it from us. Oh, my husband. I knew God would grant my prayers. This shall be a perpetual lamp to burn for Camulos as long as our children and grandchildren shall love it as we do. Several times in these programs, we have referred to various causes of defective land titles against which a policy of title insurance provides protection. One of these risks is that of forgery. I'm going to tell you of an actual example of how this protection works. Several years ago, a highly respected citizen of a community near Los Angeles, the operator of a real estate and loan business, was found to be a forger. He had issued forged notes and trust deeds covering a large number of properties in Los Angeles County. He had forged the names of the owners of these properties and had sold the notes and trust deeds to investors, keeping for his own use the money thus realized. The men and women purchasing these forged notes and trust deeds had paid the forger for them amounts totaling more than $248,000. But some of these people had been wise enough to ask for policies of title insurance. Their investments amounted to more than $85,000. The title insurance companies reimbursed these insured investors both as to principal and accrued interest promptly after the forgeries were established. The investors of the other $163,000 who had not obtained title insurance were less fortunate. After three years of court proceedings, they obtained less than $9,000, or almost $154,000 less than they had put in. Forgery is but one of the several risks to land titles against which you can be protected by a policy of title insurance issued by the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles. When you buy land or make a loan secured by land, insist on this protection. The Philadelphia and California Oil Company failed. But years later, about 1875, two other men brought in one of Southern California's first oil wells in Pico Canyon. But the field was small compared to other Southern California fields, and although it created quite a stir then, its significance was soon passed. Life on Don Inacio's acres remained peaceful and quiet, except for an occasional visit from the notorious bandit Tiburcio Vasquez, whose hideout of Vasquez Rocks was near the rancho. On one such occasion... Inacio! Inacio! Uh, see, si, Isabel, what is it? You must do something. This must not go on. But, mi querida, what are you talking about? Here, Juan, tell him. See. Si. See, tell me, one. what is it? Uh, nothing, senor. Just a uh, senor Vasquez. I... Is that all you have to say? I, this man, this bandit, this murderer, steals your horse and you say, I, with you I am disgusted. But, Isabel, he has not stolen my horse. He has just borrowed it. He leaves me his in return, and presently, some night, he will return and bring back my horse to exchange for his own. See, <sighs> don't you, Isabel? He always does. He may be a bandit, but he's a man of honor. Uh, about horses, that is. But don't you see, he is using your horse for his unholy business. Robbing, killing. See, si, perhaps. But what am I to do? What are you to do? Are you not a man? Are you afraid of him? Afraid of him? Well, why should I be? He likes me. Trust me, otherwise he should not steal my horse. <sighs> that is just it. He trusts you. As a good citizen, you should not be trusted by him. You should turn him over to the authority. <laughs> turn him over to the police, eh? <laughs> Juan, Juan. <laughs> uh, my dear, uh, 
I could as easily turn over a mountain lion to the lands. What am I to do? He will come back. You say so yourself. He will return your horse. Very well. Have men stationed and wait for him. Then when he comes... See. Then when he comes... Oh. Uh, when he comes, you are probably a widow. You like that? <sighs> you are cowards, both of you. Letting a stupid bandit frighten you. I shall be most angry if you do nothing to stop his treachery. Very well, my dear. We shall watch for him. Uh, one, you are to stay by the corral every night, watching for him. See, but what do I do? Uh, when he shows up? See. Si. You, uh, uh, run like El Diablo. <laughs> After the failure of the company to find oil, the Rancho San Francisco came into the possession of H.M. Newhall of the Newhall Farming and Milling Company, and on it he plotted the town of Newhall and later Saugus. And in 1876, the Southern Pacific Railroad holed through the Newhall Tunnel and completed the first transcontinental rail link between Los Angeles and the East. Americans flocked to the new paradise of the Pacific, crowding out the old families of Californians and the fast-dying Indians. In the early 1880s, the government sent two experts to California to study the unenviable position of the native Indians in the frontier society. One of them was a guest at the home of aging Don Ignacio del Valle. Don Ignacio, your Rancho Camulos is heavenly. I couldn't dream of a lovelier place to live. I am happy, senora. Make it your home as long as you will. I only wish that it could be longer, but I shall always remember it. The hacienda, the chapel, <laughs> that quaint rawhide couch on the porch, and... oh. Perhaps I shall put them all into my book. Your your book, Signora? You are writing a book? Yes. I've learned so much about the Indians on my trip that oh, my heart bleeds for them. See, I know what you mean. But their story can't be told in stuffy reports. I intend to tell it in a way that will touch people's hearts. So I'm writing a book. Mm, it is an excellent idea. And uh, what will you call your book, Signora? I'm going to name it after my heroine, Ramona. Ramona, I shall await its printing eagerly. Helen Hunt Jackson wrote the immortal story of Ramona, and in it she used much of the scene of Don Ignacio's home at Rancho Camulos. And now the march of progress engulfed even the outlying Rancho San Francisco, the growing metropolis of Los Angeles quickly became an American city of industry and commerce where once had stood the sleepy Spanish village. But there is disaster in every story of progress, and one of the Southland's greatest disasters took place on Rancho San Francisco. Towering high in the air within the bastion walls of San Francisquito Canyon, a great man-made barrier pinioned the waters of the vast mountainous acres, the St. Francis Dam. Like a great shadow, it loomed silent, menacing, and on that fateful night in 1928, without warning, it brought crushing horror to the valley of the Santa Clara. What was that? That noise? I, I don't. Good Lord! George, look! The dam! The dam! It's cracked! A huge crack all the way down! Look at it! It's crumbling! It's breaking up! In a minute, she's got to let loose! Yeah, but the valley, the whole valley will be flooded! In Santa Paula, I will wipe the whole town out! Yeah, and our families are there! Oh, good Lord, what can we do? It's too late to warn. Look at it. It's breaking. Come on, then. we got to get out of here fast. Run. Run for your life. A great 20-foot wall of water rushed down the valley of the Santa Clara to the sea. With it, it carried the wreckage of farms and homes and towns and scores of human lives. Millions of dollars of damage was done in one of the Southland's greatest disasters. But to the Rancho San Francisco, or that part of it called Camulos, a more personal tragedy had already taken place. It was one day in the year 1924, only a few years ago, when... Uh, they're still in there. Yeah. Almost an hour now. Funny how people like to stay in that little chapel. Yeah, it ain't so funny. If you've been here at Camulos as long as I have... Maybe you'd understand. You see, the boss, I mean, Don Piano del Valle, he was born here. This land has belonged to his family for 85 years. His father, who Don Ignacio, built this house and that chapel. Sure, I know all that. Oh, it's just an old ranch house, just a little chapel. 
It isn't used very much anymore. Slim, you just don't get it. Now, look. You see that flickering light at the window? Sure, you can always see that. And that's what I mean. That there's a lamp. It's been burning there for 60 years. It ain't never gone out. Do you understand? Well, now, I don't rightly believe that. But it's true. 60 years, and it, it's the same fire. Oh, Dona Isabel lit it way back in 1865. Yeah, and they've kept it going all these years. What for, for Pete's sake? They can put electric lights in there now. But don't you see? It's a tradition. It's, a, it's part of the rancho, part of the Del Valle family. It's... Oh, what's the use trying to tell a dumb ranch hand like you anything? I ain't so dumb. Maybe I can understand them going in that there chapel, staying so long. But what I can't figure out is, what are we doing standing here in the shadows, waiting for them? Because, Slim, this, this is the last time. When they come out tonight, they, they won't go back in again. You mean, because uh, they sold the ranch? Yeah, they sold the ranch. Camulus. For 85 years, Camulus has belonged to the Del Valle. Now... Look, uh, look. Lights are gone out. Yeah. Eighty-five years and the lamp is out. Well, I guess that's the end of it. Yeah, I, I guess so. Uh, Slim, lend me your handkerchief. I, I, I got something in my eye. Frank Graham will be back in a moment to tell you about next week's program. The Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles suggests that during the coming week you take advantage of the pleasurable opportunities afforded by the All Winter Sun Festival sponsored by the All Year Club of Southern California. The All Year Club has assembled information on all the scores of interesting and colorful events scheduled throughout Southern California during the winter months. This information is available for the convenience and pleasure of Southland residents as well as of visitors from other states. By familiarizing ourselves with these events, we can all be better hosts to our eastern visitors, and we can have more fun ourselves. Tell your neighbors, friends, and business correspondents about the all-winter sun festival. Now, what's the story for next week, Frank? Next week, we'll tell you the story of one of the great patriarchs of early California, Don Antonio Maria Lugo, head of one of its most illustrious families. There's romance and adventure, so be sure to hear it. And so until next week, this is your wandering vaquero, Frank Graham, saying, Hasta la vista, señoras y señores. The Romance of the Ranchos, a presentation of the Title Insurance and Trust Company of Los Angeles, is dramatized by John Dunkel and produced by Ted Bliss, with special music arranged by Irwin Yo. Bob Lamon speaking. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>